Okay, you asked for it. You wanted me to talk about breakthrough bleeding. What is it? Is it dangerous? And how do you make it stop? So let's do it. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author, educator, podcaster, and my channel is the health class you wish you had in high school. So before I get started, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Turn on the bell so you never miss an upload. Here we go. Okay, before I jump into what this video is about, I will let you know I'm battling all the things today. Somebody outside is cutting down their tree. There's also a leaf blower. I'm just living my best life, so I apologize in advance, but we're gonna do it. Can you hear that? That's, that's my life. That's what's happening. Okay, and I have no time to film these videos outside of today because I've got a lot of travel and things coming up, so we're just gonna be flexible. Okay, so I recently did a couple of videos about how to skip your period, is it safe? And I asked you if you all wanted to know, should I talk about breakthrough bleeding, which is something that can happen when you're on birth control and skipping your periods. And a whole lot of you said, yes, please, let's talk about it. So we're doing that today. First of all, what even is breakthrough bleeding? Breakthrough bleeding is when you bleed when you're not on your period. So in between the time where you should be bleeding. I'm specifically talking about breakthrough bleeding today. That is what's happening when you're on hormonal birth control. Usually it's just a little bit of spotting, but sometimes it can be more than that. And when can it happen? It can happen whenever you're on any kind of hormonal birth control, but it's more likely when you're doing continuous birth control. That means that you're not having that placebo week or that withdrawal week when you have a scheduled bleed. So you might be using your pills continuously or leaving your ring in continuously or your patch, that kind of thing. It can also happen when you're on what we call long acting reversible contraception or LARCs. And these are hormonal IUDs as well as the hormonal arm implant called Nexplanon. And when it can happen is really related to when you've started your birth control. So this can be very normal in the first few months of when you're using birth control like pills, patches, or rings, especially in a continuous fashion. We also see this breakthrough bleeding very commonly in the first few months of using an IUD in the arm implant. The good news is that with most of these methods, it gets better on a its own usually after those first few months. Unfortunately, with the next one on the arm implant, what you usually have by month three of having that implant in place is what you're gonna have for the rest of the time. So we do see that this irregular bleeding or breakthrough bleeding is one of the number one reasons that if somebody does decide to have their next one on removed, that's why. And I do talk about it a little bit more in a different video here that you can go ahead and watch. Let's talk about why breakthrough bleeding happens. And there's a few different reasons. One of the most common reasons is that you've just started a new birth control and it's taking time for your body to adjust. Another reason is that you're using it continuously like I kind of hinted at. And so what's happening is that while the lining of your uterus, which is what every month builds up and when you don't get pregnant, sloughs off, sorry to use the word slough, but that's what we say, and it comes out as your period, that's not happening every month. And so the lining of your uterus is kept very thin, but sometimes a little bit of it here and there could potentially bleed when you're on a continuous form of birth control. It's not dangerous, it's just kind of annoying. Another reason you might have breakthrough bleeding is that you're skipping a pill or you're not using your birth control effectively, so you're not getting that dose of hormones you're supposed to. That's not good because not only does that lead to this irregular bleeding, but it means you could also get pregnant. Another reason that you might have breakthrough bleeding, smoking. Yes, smoking is bad for so many reasons, but it can actually make you be more likely to have spotting or bleeding in between your periods, which is really annoying. This is even if you're using your birth control correctly and not skipping any pills or patches or, or rings. Okay, a big question I've gotten about breakthrough bleeding, is it dangerous? And the answer is no. Not if it's from truly the reasons I talked about, like you're getting used to a new birth control, or using it continuously, those reasons are not harmful. And another question I get, does this mean my birth control is not working? Nope, absolutely not. Your birth control is only not going to work appropriately if the reason you're having this breakthrough bleeding is because you've skipped your pills. But if you're using your stuff as you should be and you're still getting this spotting, you're still protected. Another question I've gotten is, what if it's something else? And it's true, we can't just automatically assume that all bleeding while you're on birth control is related to your birth control. So it's important that we know about it. And what that means is we'll get some information, we may or may not need to do an exam to figure out what's going on. Because here are some reasons that you could have bleeding outside of your period that aren't actually related to your birth control. They could be something like a little polyp or fibroids, which are non-cancerous growths in the uterus and the cervix that can sometimes bleed. 
It can also be the result of an infection like gonorrhea or chlamydia. Another reason you could be bleeding outside of your period is that you're actually pregnant and that bleeding is related to early pregnancy loss. And I'm not trying to scare you here. The bottom line is that if you've got new onset, weird bleeding, and you haven't just started a birth control method or you're concerned, check in with us and we can help guide you onto what we think the next best steps are. Okay, the number one reason most of y'all wanted me to talk about breakthrough bleeding is Dr. Jen, how do we make it better? And good news, I have answers. First things first, if you're smoking, go ahead and stop. If you're not sure exactly what's going on with your bleeding, I want you to track it because if you come in to see us with questions about it, we can see better what's going on. We can see where you may have started your birth control, when it tends to be happening in your cycle, how long it's been going on for, how heavy it is. All that information is super useful. And really how we fix it, if it's related to your birth control, it depends on what kind of birth control you're using. And this is my absolute favorite chart. I'm going to put the link in the references and resources below. And this is what we as healthcare providers use to kind of help guide us when it comes to helping you fix your spotting or your bleeding in between your cycle. So let's have a look. So for example, when you look at the very left-hand side here, that CU IUD stands for the copper IUD. And I know we're mostly talking about breakthrough bleeding on hormonal birth control, but this is a non-hormonal method that sometimes people have annoying bleeding with. And you can see here what they're talking about is that you can give five to seven days of NSAIDs. So that's like an ibuprofen, and that can help to decrease or potentially stop this unscheduled bleeding. The point here is that you try it for about a week, if it works, awesome. If it doesn't, then we probably need to go on to the next step. Next, I wanna focus on if you're using the arm implant or the depo shot. That's the shot that you get once every three months. And you can see, according to this chart, same thing. We try that ibuprofen to decrease bleeding. And if that doesn't work, then we may actually want to look into giving you an additional hormone like estrogen to help stabilize that lining of the uterus, which then decreases bleeding. Now, of course, it doesn't mean everybody can get this because estrogen isn't for everybody. That's a topic beyond today. But what I will say is that sometimes for a short interval, adding something like an estrogen component of a birth control pill on top of another form of birth control can really help to get that pesky bleeding down. And lastly, the question I hear most commonly is, I'm on a birth control method where I'm using it continuously, like a continuous birth control pill or the ring or the patch, and I'm not having any periods at all, which I love, but now I'm getting this pesky spotting, what do I do? So let's talk about if we're using the birth control pill continuously. What we actually recommend is that if this has been going on for about three months and your body hasn't adjusted and it's consistent, what you can do is take about a three to four day break from your birth control pill. What, Dr. Jen? As an OBGYN, you're telling me to stop my birth control? I am, but only with these caveats. If it's not in the first 21 days or three weeks that you've started this birth control, and not more than once in a month, so once per cycle. If you do these either in those first 21 days or you do it more than once a month, yeah, your birth control pill is not gonna work for not keeping you pregnant. But sometimes this quick little reset outside of those can help. Now, if you've tried these things, or you don't want to try these things and you're finding it just completely unacceptable, it's not working for your lifestyle, then it probably means we should try a different form of birth control. Okay, so to summarize, breakthrough bleeding can be really annoying. It's not really dangerous, but I totally get not wanting to have unscheduled bleeding. With some methods, it just gets better with time. With other birth control methods, we can try little things like taking a break or using estrogen or things like ibuprofen to decrease that bleeding. And for some, it doesn't get better, and that's a sign that this birth control might not be the best one for you. What other questions do you have about breakthrough bleeding? Go ahead and drop them in my comment section below. Go ahead and follow me elsewhere at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln on TikTok and Instagram, and tune into my podcast, the Let's Talk About Down There podcast, where you can go ahead and get these sorts of questions answered. You can call my voicemail, leave a message, and I'll be happy to answer these questions and anything else about reproductive health there. Super fun. I wish you days of no bleeding if that's not what you want, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.